probably use uh, frequency separation quite a bit in your workflow. It's something that I use in mine, um, and everyone uses it for a variety of different reasons. Um, if you're also not familiar with it, you probably want to go learn how to use that and then see how this can be applied. But follow along. I'll try to make sure that it's covered in a manner that can be easily explained to any experience level. So recently, we came out with this tool called uh, Infinite Retouch, which is uh, free to use, actually 100% free. I'll link that in the uh, description so you can check it out. But uh, the purpose of the tool itself was to aid in creating a workflow and allowing you to just quickly set up a workflow, which is totally customizable and very easy to use. If you're interested in seeing what this panel can do in its entirety, please check out the website because it has a full set of videos on every function of this panel. And I say it's 100% free because it is. You can use everything provided within Infinity Touch. But the only thing you cannot do really is if you save anything or modify something um, within the panel, you can't save it. So that's one thing I want to just keep in mind. But otherwise, it's free to use. And the good thing about that is everything I'm showing you today, you can access and play with. So let's get back to it here. I have this image of uh, one that I shot of my friend Christina. She's a really wonderful model. Um, and as something that I'm still working in progress, but I wanted to just send, uh, you know, use a quick snapshot of what I'm working on to show you. But let's say that, you know, we're using frequency separation here. And typically you have these two buttons and this accounts for whether you're in 16 bit or 8 bit, which is great. You don't have to worry about that or have a separate action for it. But let's say that uh, we have different methods of using frequency separation. And you can actually decide what method you want within the settings. So if I right click on either of these two buttons, you'll see that it says method. For now, I'm going to leave this as is and I'm going to revisit this in a minute. But uh, you'll see over here, it allows you to also select the layer. So once the um, FS is done running, you can decide, well, you know what, I want to select the high or the low. Or you can also decide what tool you would like to use. So for me, I have the brush tool selected. And I have my extra layer selected. And what this extra layer here is, is basically just a blank layer in between the high and the low. And typically based on whether you are going to be using the layer in between or modifying the texture or the color, you can decide what uh, layer it's going to select by default. Let me go back here for a second and I'm just going to hit play or hit the button and you'll notice that it does what it says. It's going to be using the median method instead of the Gaussian blur and I can decide how much blur to use. And for me, typically it's for me personally, it's the amount where I could see the texture gone, but I can still make out kind of the outline of the shape of the image. So it looks like it's out of focus. This will differ, you know, based on the image. So that's what I like to go by. I'm going to say uh, maybe a little bit more. There's still some texture detail there. That looks good. I'm going to say OK, and then it sets it up for me. So that's one way of using it. Another way of using it is uh, clicking on the high preview. Now, the high preview is actually pretty cool because Let's say unlike the low preview and I click on the high preview, this time it does the opposite. It tells me how much texture I want to keep or how much texture is going to be visible on the high layer. This is really important because this gives me an exact idea whether or not I've done too much frequency separation, which you can see here. It's more than just the texture. You can see a lot of the tonality coming through. So I can reduce it like this to get the exact amount that I like. And what's also important is that sometimes based on the area that you're working on, say like you're working on the forehead area and maybe the cheek area, this has different texture properties, of course, than this one, because this is more in focus. So maybe if you're only working on this area, this radius might be a little bit different. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, this gives you full control and visibility and the assurance that you're making the right split. And for me, I think 2.7 seems to be pretty good because you can see the texture being visible here. There's nothing that's not visible. There's texture in every area, which is nice, um, without a lot of haloing going on. And there you go. So that allows me to make a really nice split like this. You can decide exactly kind of, you know, how much you're looking for and then work accordingly. And, you know, I think this is important because you can decide exactly what method you like to use. You can decide what layer is being selected. 
also, if I click on low preview again, or it doesn't really matter, they both, whether you click on high or low, it's going to go to the same menu. I can also auto select tool if I want to, and also brush presets. So just a reminder, because I find that interesting. Um, also, you can combine that with actions. So for example, if you would like to add a dodge and burn action after frequent separation, or say, like a color fix, if you like to fix colors after frequent separation, you're able to do that. Uh, and a lot of people also like using uh, this last one here, which is median plus high copy. What that means is when I go back here and run it again, you'll notice that if I just click on yes, you'll notice that it adds a high copy here, which is the way that a lot of people like to um, work on the texture layer. Because if you work on this layer specifically, you modify just the texture. And if you mess up, it's easy to undo. So if I go to my healing brush, for example, click on current layer, and I use that to just heal really quick. If I decide that, you know what, I kind of messed up that texture, I want to undo it. It's all on this layer specifically. So I can turn that off and on, and you can see it reverts back to the default one. And it has another blank layer here set to the color blend mode because it allows you to modify color. So this is just for your information in case you prefer using um, a different method. It has six in total, which it should encompass everyone's needs. Um, aside from that, like I mentioned, if you would like to learn more about this panel, uh, this tool, more about frequent separation in general with using the panel, please check out infinite-tools.com um, or the link in the description. It's going to go straight to the page. And on the page itself is free tutorials on every section of this panel. So anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you like using it. And anyways, have a great day.